going to talk about Syria now because funerals are being held for the victims of a drone attack on a military academy in Homs. The Syrian army has blamed what it called terrorist groups for the attack that killed at least 100 people and left dozens injured. We are hearing 50 civilians are among the dead. Our Middle East correspondent Lina Sinjab is following the story from Beirut. I think the city and the people and the families are all still in shock, mourning the death. We've seen funeral parades yesterday and continue today. Uh, the whole country is really in, in shock about this uh, drone attack. As you mentioned, the government is blaming, um, you know, what it's called as terrorist groups, but it's really hard to understand as to who is behind this attack. The government immediately launched, um, you know, attacks on rebel-held areas in northwest and area. Uh, which is a sign of retaliation, but so far is little is known about who and why this attack took place. It's thought this was a drone attack, though, Lena. Do we know which of the groups that operate in that part of Syria has the capacity to deploy a drone in this kind of way? Well, to start with, no one has claimed responsible for the attack at the moment. And in the past, following all the situation in Syria, although the Syrian sky is very busy, you know, you have the Turks, you have the Kurdish, you have the Americans operating, you have the Iranians, the Russians, you know, everyone is like violating the, the skies, even the Israelis. But in the past, uh, the HTS, which is the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham that was linked to Al-Qaeda at some point, used some uh, drones to attack in Latakia uh, nearby from Idlib, which is a short distance. But it's hard to uh, to believe that they have, you know, drones with capacities to uh, launch such, you know, explosive attacks from over a hundred kilometer distance. Uh, so far, it's really um, raising lots of questions, especially that the Minister of Defense, who was there to attend the ceremony and celebrate with the graduates, left the scene just before the attack and even without attending the ceremony. So there is a high alert that he may have been warned against it, but did nothing about uh, the, uh, the rest. But of course, we can't confirm the reason why he left at the moment. Diana Dark is author of My House in Damascus and the Last Sanctuary in Aleppo and joins us now. Diana, a devastating day for people in Homs, three days of national mourning. We think that maybe 50 civilians, because families were there at this military academy, women and children as well were killed in the attack. What were your thoughts when you first heard of the attack and who might be responsible? Well, obviously, the choice of Homs is very significant because that's where the Syrian revolution first sort of broke out in, in, in earnest. And, of course, the, the, the Assad regime punished it big time by completely um, flattening the center of, of Homs. And, uh, you know, Marie Colvin died there. I mean, it, it's a very, very significant place. It's the capital of the revolution. So the choice of Homs is very significant. The other thing that struck me was it's uh, it's a kind of it's a change it's a new thing this use of drones against um, Assad regime targets and the echo it immediately had for me was Ukraine strangely because of course we've been hearing about the Russian attacks on in in Ukraine on civilian targets like um, funerals markets um, schools hospitals it's exactly what the Assad regime was doing in in Syria with with Russian help. And, and, and of course, the Ukrainian response to that was to start sending drones into the center of Moscow. So the sort of, the sort of David and Goliath kind of response in a way that's, that's certainly new here, that this kind of drone attack on Assad regime um, forces is, is as, as far as I'm aware, un unprecedented. So it could be the, you know, the beginning of something else in, in what is a absolutely devastating war been going on for 12 years and it is not over Diana, even though some people may think it is so Diana do you think there would be only certain groups operating in that area who would have the capability to be able to deploy drones in this way well up to now um, people didn't think that anybody did have this kind of uh, capacity that the you know the major group the the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham the HTS al-Qaeda affiliated people in Idlib they haven't had this kind of um, you know, they could do it without help from outside um, but the groups you know they're not that coordinated these days they're they're, they're pretty you know um, 
uncoordinated and and so it's hard to see where on earth it could come from because it's 120 kilometers away from from government uh you know outside government uh lines and so it's a long way to send a drone uh, the other thing that's weird actually is that um uh the there's no the, the syrian regime is giving no evidence of of the drone attack you know there there, there there's no footage of any of the, the debris or anything like that the wreckage which is unusual it's weird and of course that's speculating lots of um you know theories that is this a, a false flag thing i mean we, we just don't know it's it's too early to know nobody's claimed responsibility and diana can it, i just it, ask you you you've already raised ukraine and syria of course has fallen off the radar for many people and off people's agenda in a sense, but 12 years of immense suffering now for the people of Syria. What is life like there at the moment? It is absolutely dire. I mean, 90% of the population is below the, the poverty line. It, life there is so much harder than it was during the war. Um, and, and in recent months, there's been all this press stuff about Assad's rehabilitation, welcoming back into the Arab League, which led people to think, well, maybe we're now we're going to get some Gulf money to help with reconstruction. None of that has happened because Assad has not lived up to his side of the bargain. He hasn't made any of the concessions that the Gulf countries were asking for. So he hasn't clamped down on the captagon trade, the, the big narcotics uh, trade that, that he and his brother are, are running, you know, for their own for their own uh, enrichment. Uh, so it, it's, it's an incredibly dire situation. Just every, there's shortages of everything, about two hours of electricity a day, hardly any hardly any gas, shortages of petrol, shortages of heating fuel. I mean, just surviving is very hard work in Syria these days. Yeah, you're a very grim picture that you're painting there, Diana, but it is worth reminding people of what is still happening in Syria as we look at the aftermath, pictures of the aftermath of this attack in Homs. Yeah. Thank you.